So this is only a short summary of what we experienced at UC Irvine. We had uh, many more events. One of our uh, delegation members was spat at by an SJP. Uh, we, were, uh, um, we were told to go to the gas chambers, although none of us were from Europe. Of course. Uh, they told us that we are white, and I don't know if you can see me. Um, no white. <laughs> But it didn't uh, uh, prevent them from saying that words, those hatred and anti-Semite words towards us, although half of the delegation <laughs> weren't Jews. Uh, they even said that, uh, y you saw that, she saw that we are Jews that speaking Arabic because they didn't think that there is Arabs or uh, minorities that lives in Israel. So about the minorities, we are, 25% of Israel's population. There is 1.8 million Muslims, 350,000 Bedouins, uh, 169,000 Christians, uh, Jews, there are around 140,000, and others, there are 388,000. By others, these are Christians that doesn't define themselves as Arabs because they came from different parts of the world, or uh, the new uh, nationality that was recognized by the Israeli government in 2014, the uh, um, Aramaic nationality, uh, and as well, part of the South Lebanon army that I am part of, uh, that we are under Lebanese nationality in Israel. Um, and many others, like the Baha'is, and uh, many people. So I don't want to take too much from your time because I'm going to talk a lot tonight. Uh, <laughs> I would like to start our first uh, presentation with Dima Taya. Uh, she's from uh, the village Kalanswa, from the center of Israel, and she is going to uh, tell you her story. Uh, go ahead, Dima. Thank you very much. Kalanswa, now it's a city. <laughs> so we are 3,000 people there. <laughs> we are growing up. Good evening, everybody. How was the falafel? Good. The falafel, I will give you an information, is the famous food in Israel and the food that Arabs and Jewish share together. And to let you know that Jewish people come to Arabs countries in Shabbat to eat falafel and hummus. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> so uh, my name is Dima. I'm 25 years old. I'm an Arab Muslim girl. I live in Kalanswa city, the small city in the center. We used to, um, my family used to grow uh, strawberries. So we have strawberries ground fields, you know. And uh, have you ever seen that? You should, you should go and visit the ground. Because what the ground taught me, that whatever you take care and give it and uh, protect it from viruses, it's not cheating the human. But maybe the human can cheat each other. And this is my message from the ground to us as minorities to be loyal to the country who protect us and hug us and give us our rights as the Jewish people and as the, uh, and give us the priority as the other nationalities who are living inside Israel. The greatest communities and the most interesting communities who are the multiculture and the multi-religion and the multi-backgrounds and the multi-education. This is what I have learned and what I have so. When I raised up in, 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 in England, my father just say, Dima, when I was 14 years old, you are going to ETC International College to study English. And there I lived with a British family. And my journey of cooperation and accept the different and understand that we th that the world living with different nationalities and different religion starts from a young age and when i come back and i just have a look at my israel country the democracy country 
that have lots of colors inside, multi-religion inside, and gives the right for the citizens inside to have their own religion. If you had once go to Jerusalem and see that there are mosques, mosques and there are a, a, a church, and the, everyone has his own nation, his own every nationality has his own freedom to have his own religion, and how people cooperate together and live one in behind one. So people who don't visit Israel can't say it's an apartheid or can't say it's, a, 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 it's an, an, an anti, you know, a, a, and don't accept others and don't give right to the minorities. Because me as a Muslim minority, I have lots of rights such as the Jewish in the country. I uh, use, we have uh, changed this. <laughs> Lots of information to tell you, so we are exciting. Thank you. So before the parliament, before the Knesset, I used to do uh, some delegation uh, on the Ministry of Communication and Diaspora. And one of my delegations was uh, to Ireland, to Dublin. And it was on the week, Apartheid Week. Uh, I couldn't really imagine the hateness the blinded hateness for Israel until I just being on the road and see the people just screaming anti my country. And I stand there and I say, I am a minority. I am an Arab Muslim girl. And they thought I'm from the Mossad. <laughs> and some say, no, you are not Arab. You just know to speak Arabic. So. I was in a shock, but at the end of the day, our message bring the light on the dark because you can't hide the sun. And after that, I start working on the parliament. This is me in the middle, and it's a police, uh, policeman and policewoman who came to the parliament, the Knesset, to have a tour inside. And I did for them the tour as an Arab Muslim uh, woman. They were so proud to see an uh, Arab Muslim inside the Knesset. And this is a profit that there, and I have lots of friends who work with me in the Knesset. We were just like 15 Arabs inside the Knesset who works as, a, 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 as such as me. And from all religions, not just Muslims. And all of them was my friend, and this is a proof that Israel gives a chance also to minorities to involved in the society. Do you know that 25% of the Arabs, they are in the Knesset from the 120 members of Knesset? Do you know that there's women in the Knesset? And who choose them? Who choose them? Who choose our representing in the Knesset? us, the citizens, by the law. Israel is a city and it's a country of law. We have a law that goes for everybody, from the prime minister to the simple citizen. We have court, we have, not like uh, the Arabs countries. They can teach us, as Israel country, what democracy means. Saudi Arabia and Iraq and Syria and Jordan can teach us what democracy means. Just before one week, Saudi Arabia in the 21st century allowed women to ride a car. And Angela Merkel in Germany, she runs the world for the first time in the election. Do you think if she was born in Arab countries, she would be president? Do you think? But me as a minority living in Israel, I have a chance as a law from the age of 21 to go and be a member of Knesset if as a democracy, the people will choose me. So before just saying things, and, and I understand people who don't, who don't really know Israel because the disinformation of the media Unfortunately, 
And do you know what the media did for me before I come to here, to America? They attacked me. The Arab media attacked me for saying the truth. They sent for me through ratings on the Facebook just because I did an interview and I told them the same things I'm telling you today. And if there was no law in Israel, I will not stand here with my brain and body. The law make them on the right direction. I love my nation. I love the Muslims. I love Arabs. I'm one of them. I'm, I'm bringing their voice, and especially the woman voice. But I want to start from us, from our heart. Peace starts from us. We have to recognize that Israel is our country and we are part of it and we have to cooperate and we have to be a part of this country and stand one each to gather and put hand in hand to have a grow nation to success because everything is available in our country to work, to, to have a job, to everything you can imagine we can do in our country. So let's look at the positive things, not the negative things. And don't let the media or our some wrong leaders take us to the wrong direction. Because there are some leaders, unfortunately, unfortunately, washing the minds of the young people by dividing, by making grabs, by just, you know, look at each other and start criticizing each other. We have to change that. We have to put hand in hand and go for a word. A country who respect the citizens that living inside is a country who should be living inside. And we should give respect and loyalty to this country, not the opposite. And I'm here also today to represent the woman voice, that they are afraid to talk. Lots of women think like me, but they don't have the courage to stand in front of all the criticizing. They don't have the courage to stand in front of all the attacking. But the truth, we will say it and we will bring it to you and to all of the world. And the last thing I will say, instead of just criticizing and cry, we have to understand that true happiness can only be attended when you discover your passion and work toward attaining your goals. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dima. Um, and uh, I would like to continue with our next speaker. Uh, his name is Ram Asad. He's from the village. It's a village, right? It's still a village? Okay. He's from the village uh, of Sophia. <laughs> and uh, go ahead. Thank you, thank you. Hello, guys. I'm happy to be here very much. Thank you for hosting us tonight. Uh, so as you said, my name is Ram. I'm 25 years old. Uh, who am I? I'm kidding. Uh, this year I'll be starting my second year as a student uh, in Haifa University for Geography and Environmental Studies. Uh, my story is I was first born, I was born in a kibbutz, a uh, Jewish kibbutz named Bet Alpha, next to Janine. Um, and since I was young, I studied in school with Arabs and Jewish, so I know both languages very well. I received my first draft to the IDF in when I turned 17 and was recruited to the Naha, a combat unit, and served there for three years as a combat soldier. What is that? Oh, the church bells. Okay, <laughs> I love the sound. Uh, keep it, keep it. It's okay. Um, so, uh, can you click, please? So, who you might not know that, but Jews. I'm I'm Jews anyway. Uh, Jews are a religion that a small religion that resides in the Middle East, mainly in Israel, Lebanon, and Syria. Uh, today there are 1.5 million Jews 
uh, who is scattered around the world, but mainly uh, in, in the Middle East. It, you might not know that, but the Jews was established in Egypt in 1017 by a guy, a ruler, whose name was Al-Hakim by Amr Allah, and was intended to be a sect of Islam, a shite of Islam, uh, in, inspired by Greek philosophy. So one night, one day, the leader has disappeared, and the new followers has uh, was persecuted and deported from Egypt, uh, forcing them to land to settle in nearby lands like Israel, Lebanon, Jordan, and others. So this put them in a very tough situation because, on the one hand, Jews who settled outside of Israel fought with Muslims and the countries against Jewish settlers in Israel while other Jews who settled in Israel fought with a paramilitary organization like Lehi, Agana, and others uh, for years. And after a few years, they have found an understanding, the Jewish leaders, with the, uh, with the Jewish leaders about the future of the country. And they, the Jewish leaders has signed an agreement that all Jews male, not women, women doesn't go to the IDF, all Jews male will be drafted to the IDF as an unseparated part of the Israeli society. Um, unlike Muslims and Jews and, and uh, Christians, thanks, and some other uh, Jewish communities in Israel. So, uh, can you click it please? So, as I said, I was uh, recruited to the Nahal a combat unit and my, my reason for going to that battalion, to, my, to that unit, because my dad was that guy with a mustache. Uh, he was my battalion commander in 1983 to 1984. He was recruited to the paratroopers unit in 1973 and served in the army for 26 years. He, got, he kept going higher and higher in his rank until he got to a brigadier general. He participated in too many operations that I can't even tell you about. Um, that's one on the left, in the middle, that's me with other my unit members and that on the bottom the picture it was a uh, small squad from the Druze battalion that was uh, how do you say it? broke apart uh, yeah and like two years ago and all the Druze has scattered around all the IDF. Uh so my as I said my dad was recruited to the paratroopers unit and five others of it of his brothers and one of them my uncle Wafa has killed has been killed in one in in Gaza in a military service with two of his unit members and he left a wife and uh, two kids behind so my dad wanted to commemorate his memory and we have the Jewish community uh, 420 fallen Jewish soldiers and victim attacks uh, terror victim attacks and he wanted to commemorate his, their memory. So he, he established an association called Bishvila Banim, which has two meanings in Hebrew. The first one is for the sons, or in the memorial of. And the second one is the, uh, in, in the son's road. Trail. trail, yeah. Path, trail, track. Thank you. So uh, the, that trail uh, goes through 18 Druze villages. It's lanced about 226 kilometers, 140 miles, and uh, its its idea is for traveling, riding, cycling, uh, jogging, whatever you want, because the Jews soldier, the Jews who lives in the in Israel, just loved it so much that they used to go er every day, every night, ev whenever they wanted, just to look at the views. The landscape are beautiful. The love the country, Jews who live in a country, no matter where they are, they are loyal to the country. Like Jews in Syria serve in the Syrian army. Jews in Lebanon serve in the Lebanon, Lebanese army. Jews in Israel, here I am. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you click? No click. Another click is not me. <laughs> so my purpose here uh, for coming here tonight uh, for in the United States and for this school uh, is to expose people about the Jewish community a little bit and about me and to make you understand that in Israel there is a co beautiful coexistence 
there is cooperation between all religion or religions and we live next to each other in my village it's just fear we have Jews Jewish uh, Christian Muslims Bedouins the first neighbor is the, called the Bedouin uh, neighbor so you can't you can't say we can't live next to each other we love each other in Israel we don't have friends we're all brothers so thank you very much for listening thank you very much Rob um, yeah you have to to see us uh, what we are together all the day uh, truly friends <laughs>